Minister Dr. Rav Gonsalves on Tuesday, October 1st, 2013, visited the site of the Argyle International Airport for a first-hand update on the site works. Members of the media accompanied the Prime Minister and were able to capture a complete update on the project. The tour commenced at the area earmarked for the setting up of the asphalt and concrete batching plants, and where pieces of the asphalt plant are already on site. Here he was guided by Chief Project Engineer Mr. Jeffrey Cato. From here it was over to the stone crushing plant and then into the first kilometer of the site where the lane of the basin in preparation for the pavement works is far advanced. From this point onwards, 200 meters, we start um, the concrete and that will be the area for the turning, the turning head. The airplane will come from the terminal building, taxi down here, turn and take off into the wind. Here we still have to place um, 10 centimeters more of this um, stony material and then uh, concrete of 30, 35 centimeters thick. From uh, 100 meters onward, it is, it is ready now to receive the, the sub base material and we're currently producing that in the crushing plant. And once you have placed that material, then you'll be ready to receive the 13 centimeters of asphalt. It's 8, eight centimeters and 5 centimeters. Um, and that is the entire runway. So this is more or less the configuration of the runway. We have two, 200 centimeters, uh, which would uh, make up the turning area. The, the entire runway itself is asphalt, and then at the other end, we have a similar turning area, um, 200 meters long, where con concrete would also be placed. So once we have placed that um, last layer, then uh, we have about 1,900 meters of runway uh, ready to receive asphalt. It was with great enthusiasm that word of the start of work on the city fences was received. We had indicated earlier on, and you would have heard me talking about it too. Beyond the actual runway, we have to do some city fence because there's a kind of overhang. At the northern end of the runway, that is the two to end of the runway, uh, because of the category of the airport, which is um, 4E, we have to maintain the 300 meters all the way for the 9,000 feet of runway. And that would take us, the runway itself is on, on, is on land, but the, the, the fringes of the airport. That would take us about 600 meters um, outwards into the sea. We have already commenced that work, and the specialist that did the design, it's he should be coming to St. Vincent on Thursday, after tomorrow, so that we can do all whatever necessary modifications we have to do. Uh, because it, um, that area is out into the sea, we have to do a special design for that area, and the stones, we have to properly select the stones that we're going to place there. And we will we'll also be placing um, uh, uh, between 600 and 800 um, tetrapods to protect um, that area from the, the aggressiveness of the sea. Uh, it's about 300,000 um, cubic meters of, of stones that we have to place there. But that stone will not come from this end, it will come from the petroglyph, which is a lot closer. The site of the petroglyph. Yeah. CEO of the IADC, Dr. Rudy Matthias, who led the tour with the Prime Minister, was able then to give a general overview of the work on the project so far. As you can see, we've started the pavement works. What you're looking at here is what we call the first kilometer of the runway. We are doing the base lane, which has extended up to nearly two kilometers, 1,900 meters of the runway. The runway is 2,743 meters and we are lane based right now up to 1,900 meters or thereabouts. Uh, one of the reasons of course why we haven't gone beyond 1,900 is because we still have to do some work on the river. As you know we have to create some culverts. We are going to build a series of culverts, five parallel culverts we are going to construct to carry the river the Yambo River under the runway. We have recently concluded a contract with the Mexican firm and have paid them a deposit and they are right now in the process of putting some of these culverts in containers to ship to St. Vincent and we are expecting that sometime this month we will start receiving some of these sections of the culverts and as they come we are going to start installing them. The idea is that we will start this installation process and that may go up to about January or February next year. But while we are doing the culverts installation, we would also continue to do work on the runway that is beyond the river and in this area as well. You saw that we've already received some parts of the asphalt plant and we expect to receive the rest of the asphalt plant uh, by mid-month, this month. 
and uh, we may take about three to four weeks to assemble the plant and to um, commission it and after that and Dalia and his team will start producing the asphalt as he said uh, most of the runway is in asphalt but this part that we are looking at here the first head of the runway in fact both ends of the runway will be in concrete we are also buying a concrete plant and that plant is expected to arrive in St. Vincent also the mid of this month and we are hoping that we can install that plant, assemble it and commission it so that we can start producing concrete that is the concrete using the cement um, that work we expect to start doing sometime in November perhaps late November now the areas where we are going to put concrete would be the apron area, the entire apron will be in hydraulic concrete it is a big apron um, in fact, that apron can hold somewhere in the vicinity of 40 planes, depending on the different sizes of the planes, of course. But we can park simultaneously three big jets, about six of the ATR, Liat ATR planes, and we can park two of the 727 Amerijet type aircraft in the cargo apron, and we can park again another 20 odd small jets in our. Um, general aviation apron. So it is a massive apron that we are creating. We are building an airport that appeals to the future so that when we are finished at Argyle we wouldn't have to do any substantial changes maybe within the next 20 years. That apron work will start sometime in late November and we expect that the concrete work in the apron as well as the two ends of the runway may extend into May, June next year. The concrete work is, is more work than the asphalt work. But we are going to start it first so that we um, get the concrete work done as early as possible. If need be, we will work in shift. We are buying some lights so that if we have to work at night, we are going to work at night. We have a commitment to completing this project next year. And we are going to complete the project next year, God's willing. We have, with the help of the Prime Minister and his government, identified now all the money that we need and the money is coming in um, as we need it and uh, we are able to proceed with the work of building this airport. The terminal building as you see is almost done. It is about 92% complete and uh, the OECC is planning to hand over the terminal to us very early in December. In fact, they have a date set as the 30th of November. And when they hand over the terminal building to us, we are going to start the retrofitting of the terminal building, meaning to put in the conveyor belts, the desk, the immigration counters, and so on. And that work would extend, of course, into next year. And uh, our idea is to try to get the retrofitting of the terminal done by mid next year as well, so that with God's grace and help, we should have the construction work completed by mid next year. After that, of course, we would be testing the equipment and then our dear Prime Minister can say, let the planes land. We're going to try to have that done by next year, before the end of next year. Well, we have one little matter. It's an important matter for all of us. Uh, it is a matter on which we've been working with the National Trust for some time. We have provided funding to them to pay an Egyptian team to come here this month to start the process of cutting and relocating the petroglyphs. Um, we expect that work may take about two months and uh, we are hoping that the National Trust can get the team back here this month because of course the petroglyphs are on rocks that are within the runway area and they have to be moved. But we are providing the money to get the, the work done. It is um, our hope that the National Trust can find their counterparts from Egypt to come back here to help us get this work done on time. We are going to go now to visit an area that Andalia is working on, the um, sea defense work that has been done at the northern end of the runway. And that, as we say, is to protect the northern end. The runway itself is on land, but the shoulders extend into the sea and we need to protect the shoulders of the runway from the, the waves in that area. I'd just like to assure them on one aspect, on the money which you mentioned. As you know, in the budget, I indicated that Rudy had sent for me a document showing that we needed in the region of 80 million US dollars to complete the airport. I outlined how I was raising the 80 million dollars, 20 million dollars 
US inland sales from Canawan, which as you know, I've received five million as a down payment already, 3.75 million for the first quarterly payment. These are US dollars. That was done on the 25th of August. So you can check three months, you will see by the 25th of November, another 3.75 US would be paid and so on until the entire $20 million for the 40 acres of land in Canada paid off. That's $20 million. We have an agreement of $40 million US from the Alba Bank. 20M money is a 2% interest. We have been paid 10 million of that already. I anticipate that the other 30 million after the 15th of October we will see further payments. Then, so that's 60, 10 million US. We have already signed the agreement, passed the law in Parliament in relation to the Export Import Bank of Taiwan. Um, those monies, all the arrangements should be put in place and those monies should be ready for disbursement by December. That is the target we are working with that. Then, as you are aware, there are two loans from the, the Bank of Nova Scotia. One of $5.4 million US and another of around $5.2 million US. The, the first loan of 5.4 million US is to purchase the facilities for the, the tower, the control tower and ancillary facilities. And the other loan of $5.2 million is to purchase concrete mixture, mixer, mixers, an ambulance and three um, uh, fire trucks from Oshkosh Corporation in the USFA. The first loan is guaranteed by the Export Corporation of Canada. The second loan is guaranteed by the Export Import Bank of the USA. Each of the loans is three month LIBOR, which is under half of one percentage point, plus a margin of two percent. So it's under two and a half percent interest. Those are shorter term monies of six years. They're smaller sums of monies. Then we have received a small sum of money, loan and grant from the CARICOM Development Fund. Those are the monies where we are. If for any reason we need any other monies, it wouldn't be a great deal of money. Um, and we will be able to to proceed so that for persons who are saying well they don't know where the balance money coming from I stated it earlier and as you see the money is coming in as needed in fact yesterday I told Rudy I release from the monies which had come in to the government from the various funds 10.2 million BC dollars because when the money comes, I don't pass it all over one time to Rudy. I put it in the development account at the at the bank, in, in the accountant general's development account. And from that, we transfer it as need be to the IADC. Um, the, insofar as the management arrangements go, we are working together, a, a paper was presented to us by IADC as to the management structure which we have and I've been involved in myself in discussions with, 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 with other entities external to us. We are doing ongoing training in a number of different areas. Then as regards including the training for the, for the um, fire trucks and Martha's Vineyard has twinned with us out of the United States to do some work with us. Then insofar as the planes are concerned, 
Glen Beach chairs a committee and we had a meeting um, just about three weeks ago to get a report as to the planes out of the US and um, uh, Canada and Britain um, in respect of the arrangements for them to land at Argyle International Airport. So we are, we are, we are, we are putting all the pieces together as we go along. This has been a remarkable venture in self-mastery and it is something which the people of St. Vincent are going to need, especially the younger ones, would benefit from immensely. God, this is theirs.